from the new champion. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of round number seven, a referee in charge, Kenny Bayless, stops the contest upon suggestion of the corner. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is the new WBA middleweight champion of the world, Rio. Honestly, it's, it's okay. Let me put it into perspective. He is, what is he now, 13, and he's 13 and 1 with 10 KOs. His last loss was the last fight which happened against, in May against Hassan Ndam. I'm going to explain who Hassan Ndam is a little bit later on in the video. That was a split decision. It was a split decision loss on Murata's part in all places. Japan just so happened where he's from crazy because usually if a fighter's robbed they're usually robbed in another territory not in their own territory it is it's, it's, it's kind of complex to explain but anyway on tissue controversy this is tissue controversy live i cover every single major fight live and dude is good the key to this fight was he simply walked hassan and dom down he invested in the body and basically hassan and dom gassed out quit on a stool in between round seven and rounds eight. They didn't show it. Let's see if we can get you some um, some uh, replays. Uh, please subscribe. All the links to my social media are right down below in the description box. Also, we would like to um, see if he's going to do a uh, post-fight interview in English. Because I'm watching this live. It's actually 1.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right now, October the 22nd. The fight took place um, earlier this morning about 7.15 7 um, a.m. my time. So even though I know who won, I said, okay, well, I'm just going to watch the fight and see how it all plays out. So he now has the belt that Danny Jacobs lost to Golovkin. The WBA, he's the WBA world champion at 160 pounds. But here's the thing. The WBA, now I'm only explaining this to the new people who don't know. The WBA has two belts. They have a WBA super world champion, which Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin has. You can't. When you're the WBA world champion, the one that Murata has, you can't fight for any other title outside, as far as the unification, outside of that title that's above you. So the question is, will he ever get the winner of Canelo versus Golovkin? Because Canelo and Golovkin are supposed to be fighting again, and in, in, in they're, they're, they're entertaining the idea of March. But we're hearing more of May. Okay? Now... Um, if they were to fight, it would be for the WBA Super World title, the mandatory to Murata's belt, and the IBF, not the WBC. But the question is, will Murata ever get a shot at Canelo sometime in the next, you know, two years or so? That's the question. Will this be in English? Will they translate? I doubt it. Go on. We'll be back. Top rank boxing on ESPN. Murata, the new champion. I doubt it. I thought they are going to translate. Let's see. Are we going to get some uh, replays? I'm looking forward to this fight, too. You know, I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to this card. Even though you were supposed to be uh, Jesse Magdaleno on the, uh, in the main event. But, but still, I'm really interested to see uh, Archer Bird to be in. But that's a whole different story. Um, and then, damn, this one. Let me screenshot that. That shit right there is going to be lit. But anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. Um... It's all going to depend on where Murata goes from here. Now, he is a big draw over there in Japan. Any Asian, whether it's uh, Zushiming over in China or in Japan, they draw big television ratings over there, you know, when it comes to um, 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 Asian fights on television. So it's going to be best for the death for, for Aram to try to keep him over there, but to also keep him um, um, here as, uh, as, as well as far as mix him up as getting American exposure. So, you know, he can start campaigning for guys like Canelo and Golovkin if those guys are still around. If they don't, if, if Golovkin doesn't move to 168, and I truly doubt that Canelo, you know, would fight him. I'm, I'm sorry to say, but with the politics involved with that, I truly doubt that he would fight him, meaning Canelo. So, I'm trying to figure out, like, what do you do with him, you know, as far as, well, since he fought these last two fights over there, his next fight, do you bring it to the States? And I'm pretty sure his next fight... Is going to be on. Um, I mean, I, from from what I from 
from what I can tell, you know, with this with this ESPN deal and the way I've noticed, noticed that Bob Arum has worked over the years, I wouldn't be surprised if his next fight is on ESPN, regular ESPN here in, in the States. So as you can see, Hassan Endam, once his movement went out, um, once his movement went out, you started seeing that um, Endam, oh, this is what happened in between the corners. Did he quit? Or did the referee call it off? What happened? Let's go back a little bit. Only because the corner told him to call. They saw enough. They saw the punishment. The fighters didn't want any more. The fight was stopped. And Murata, see that's the... Yeah, he didn't contest that. He didn't contest that. Remember Hassan Indon from all those years ago when he fought Peter Quillen and he literally got knocked down six times and he was getting knocked all over the ring? It was a crazy fight. You know, then he went on to get a win over um, over Curtis Stevens. He lost to David Lemieux in a fight where many thought he was going to get stopped. Then um, he won one, two, three, four. Remember that brutal knockout last year? Um, I believe it was, if not the knockout of the year, one of the knockouts of the year when he fought um, Afonso Blanco, knocked him out, had him twitching all on the ground. And then he went on to fight uh, Murata in the fight where a lot of people felt he got outboxed and didn't win. And now he gets knocked out. And usually that's what should happen in the rematch, in a controversial rematch. If you are on the opposite end of a controversial decision, in my opinion, in the next fight, you got to go out there for the stoppage and not leave it to the judges. So despite what you may think about the uh, Andre Ward situation, that's what he did um, in the rematch with Kovalev. Murata did it in this fight. you know, And Canelo or Golovkin, they have to make sure in their rematch they do the same thing. So... Let me go look at the rankings real quick at 160 pounds, and let's talk about who you could possibly see Murata in there against next. By the way, please subscribe. I'm not doing this for my health. Um, so, hmm. Let's move this over here then. Let's move this over here. So, when you're a champion, you have to fight somebody in the top 15. Now, looking at these names... You know, Rob Brand, he's fighting at 168 in the Cruiserweight. Um, now, this is not up to date, by the way. Um, he's not going to get David Lemieux. He's not going to get Danny Jacobs because he's... Murata's a top-ranked fighter, so top-ranked fighters fight on ESPN. Their library to the fights go to ESPN. They're not fighting on HBO. Do you see David Lemieux coming over to ESPN? He's a Golden Boy fighter. I don't think so. Do you see him newly signed to HBO coming over to ESPN? So you have to factor that in as well. Now, could we see him against Martin Murray? You know, Dmitry Chudinov, you know, and all these other guys. Do you really, you know, I mean, do you really know or do you want to see? You know, but regardless, this is one of the guys he's going to have to fight. But also, remember that um, by the time he gets back into his next fight, these rankings could totally be different. So you can have some... You know, some different names in the mix. Or what if, nah, Andrade, I would even say Andrade, who's now fighting at 160, who lost or dropped his WBA, you know, or not fighting or defending his WBA 154-pound title. He's fighting at 160. He defeated Ryan Tess Fox. Would he probably try to go after, you know, Murata? But once again, Andrade is signed to HBO. Murata is top-ranked ESPN. So, you know, there's different ways you can go with it, I guess. But from what I'm seeing, you know, there's not too many pickings out here for Murata, especially when you look at the political landscape of things. Well, could they do with Andy Lee? You know, could Andy Lee mysteriously, magically appear in the WBA ranking sometime in the, in the near future? You know, and I understand you say, I mean, I skipped over Antoine Douglas, but we don't know what Antoine Douglas, you know, or if um, um, uh, Al Heyman, will allow Antoine Douglas to go over to ESPN. However, um, when it comes to um, Heyman's lower-level fighters, no disrespect, we have seen him be more lenient with them. But anyway, I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. I'm still not sold on Murata yet. Yes, he does have the skill. Yes, he does have the background and the pedigree. But you can only go by the level of, of competition. However, I'm impressed with what he did with this fight. You know, he did, you know, get um, Hassan and Dama there, whether he quit or not. He beat him into submission, you know, so it all depends. But anyway, please subscribe. All the links to my social media are right down below in the description box. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live.